Ja, und zum herzlich willkommen zurück zu den Invincible. Einmal mehr. Wir haben wirklich, glaube ich, noch drei Stück, die wir hier machen können. Und die ich mir noch anschauen möchte. Auch wenn die sehr enden, mich hat etwas kalt lassen. Aber trotzdem möchte ich sehen. Und dann haben wir das Spiel auch wirklich komplett abgeschlossen. Zumindest so wie ich, ich es kann. Das ist der Kommandor der IC Dragonfly Unit, Astrogator Novik. Ich mach mal nix. Ich bin hier, Astrogator. Unfortunately, I don't have good news. The Cyclops got out of control. What do you mean? Just like the other machines. Now, it'll wander around aimlessly. Or even worse. I had a feeling it would end like this. Do you know what Rehitra is planning now? I have no idea. But then I need to talk to him. You, sir? Yes. Can you switch me somehow? Spannend, dass es da auch einen anderen Dialog gibt, wenn man nichts tut. Okay, okay. I'm switching you to the bridge. He should be able to hear you now. Done. Please talk. Hallo, Condor. Es ist Astrogator Novik, Commander of the IC Dragonfly Ship. I repeat, this is Astrogator Novik to the crew of the USCA Condor Cruiser. Please come in. <laughs> Could you stop with all this? Rohitra, Engineer Rohitra. Among our crew, I'm the last man standing, so to speak, which I guess makes me commander. <laughs> Who would have thought? In that case, I'm making an official request to join our forces. To prevent the danger that threatens both sides. Oh, enough, Novik. That's enough. I agree. Officially and all that jazz. We're already taking steps to eliminate the threat. I'd even say that your crew is working on it pretty damn actively. We stopped playing defense and took the fight to them. The cloud suffered significant losses. As a counterattack, though, it disrupted our communications. That's why we need to change tactics. Hmm. To be honest, I don't see how changing tactics in this situation would make any difference. I strongly disagree, Novik. All it takes is the right tool. Meaning what exactly? Let me remind you that we're dealing with a dispersed entity whose technological prowess is still unknown. And it has so far destabilized every machine sent its way. Even the most specialized ones. That's why I'll keep it simple this time. No electro brains, no memory. Only pure energy. You still have an answer, New Litra. Please, just tell me straight. What? A nuclear weapon? Seriously? Damn right. I won't leave all this unresolved. How many warheads do you have? 54. From 30 kilos to 100 megatons. Oh. That's quite an arsenal. Over the top, I'd say. I'm preparing eight smaller warheads to start with. And then? We'll see. Are you sure this is a good idea, Rehitra? <sighs> Listen, Yasna, I know how it must look to you. A hot-headed guy from the Alliance who wants to use nukes. But put yourself in my shoes. I have two dozen hours tops of complete situational awareness. I'm taking action here and now based on my best judgment. I don't know what will happen later. Where will I wake up? In what condition? So I'm going to avenge my people before that happens and ensure the safety of those who survived. They all deserve better than this. I know you understand. You're like me. You would do anything for your crew. Look, I understand how you feel, but you can't approach this problem in terms of revenge. We are dealing with creations of necro-evolution. Dead evolution. And probably non-sentient ones. Taking revenge on the cloud is like... Whipping the ocean for sinking a ship? Exactly. Like Xerxes. We won't gain anything from a mindless attack. On the other hand, knowledge about these creations may turn out to be crucial in helping their victims. In helping you, Rehitra. My memory 
you could... It's possible. Well, thank you. What for? I haven't done anything. <laughs> for reminding me of my mom. But as long as the cloud is a threat to others, my condition comes second. You and Itra are still reasoning as though we were standing face to face with a thinking opponent. What if these beings are not our enemy at all? <laughs> oh, good one. Are you forgetting how many of us they've already killed? I will never forget for Hitra. So I can't help feeling that they operate without any strategic plan. They attack from one incident to another. They're non-sentient, as the doctor put it. So what, they're stupid? And that's why they can't be hostile? It's absolute nonsense. Well, it could be. Yes, sir. What do you think? Horahitra, you have no idea what we're up against. These mechanisms are just doing what they did a millennia ago. And we were the ones that provoked them. What? How? By coming here with all our gear, blasters, transmitters, rockets. It's like kicking a hornet's nest. They've faced countless species over millions of years. At this scale, humanity is just a blip to them. Wait. What species are you talking about? Dr. Yasna found various traces of conflict, lasting for hundreds of thousands of generations. Both living organisms and mechanical creators of the cloud, as well as other products of dead evolution. The list is quite long. Hang on. Creators? Yes. Millions of years ago, someone must have built primordial mechanisms. Machines could have self-built in successive generations, but something must have created them first. I don't buy it. It's like some robot fables. No, Rachel, these are no fables. We have gathered evidence for all this. <sighs> How did these machines even get here? Who built them? Probably some alien race, highly evolved. It all adds up if we assume they crashed on Regis III. But not even a single living organism survived the accident. Only machines were left. And then what? They started bashing in each other's tin heads? Doesn't make much sense to me. Machines don't have emotion. They don't... argue. First things first. Millions of years ago, some highly advanced race sent machines to Regis III. And these were specialized homeostatic mechanisms left with no one to command them. As an engineer, you know well how it is. A robot does what it needs to do, whether it serves someone or not. At first, they probably just repaired themselves or built a home for their dead masters. Until something forced them to change. Exactly. Certain types of predator eat anything that moves. So I'm betting they were attacked by a local fauna. The key was that these machines had the ability to produce others as needed. To combat, say, flying reptiles, they started producing flying machines. That still doesn't explain why they started fighting among themselves. Since they already defeated the living organisms, why keep producing themselves? It makes no sense. What is the guiding principle of a homeostat? To survive. Apparently, the machines pose a threat to one another. They use the same source of energy to function. A common, finite resource. Okay, but why did some flies survive this? Not something bigger, better. The way I see it, they were better. The best. In necroevolution, the bots that used up the fewest resources won. So they miniaturized, or became sedentary. The former process gave rise to the cloud. The latter started this bizarre genre of, of metal structures resembling vegetation, which formed the city. And they're still growing? No. They lost the fight for survival, and now they're just rusting remnants. Only one form survived. The flying microbots that conquered all land areas on Regis Three. So these flies were just the best adapted to the conditions of this planet yes that's how it works so to summarize some alien race sent advanced robots to regis 3 local dinosaur-like monsters tried to eat them 
So the robots produced other robots, which produced more and more robots, until they fell victim to their own overproduction. After a number of iterations and wars for resources, they spat out the murderous cloud, which took over the planet. Indeed. To put it simply... For me, the matter is perfectly clear. It makes no sense to bomb these creatures. I'll even say it's a greater danger to us than to them. But how else do you imagine defeating the cloud? Well, that's the thing. I don't. It's invincible. Yes, sir, do you agree? Well... Und sie haben noch schön, dass es heißt, sie sind Invincible und das Spiel heißt Invincible und wir warten auf The Invincible. Ja, I very much agree. Another attack would make no difference. Just a few flies are enough for the cloud to regenerate. What if we destroy their nests? No, Retra. Unless we want to destroy the entire planet, it's impossible to eliminate them all. And even then, there's no guarantee they would die in space. After all, the flies need nowhere, water or food, only solar energy. Uh, but what else could we do, if not attack? We can leave this place and never come back. We have a lander. Sorry, but I'm not going anywhere. You on the other hand? I'm surprised you didn't evacuate already. Well, I had to make sure you won't do something you'll deeply regret. Huh. I'm done. Warheads are armed. One more press of a button, and there'll be no turning back. I can't. Uh, that was close. I'm suspending all actions leading to conflict. But what should I do now? Well, we have a lander. So you can get to the Dragonfly. All of us? Yes. Your men are welcome on board. I'm going back. And you, Rahitra? Are you flying with us? You actually mean it? Damn. Thank you. But I can't leave just before my people arrive. I have to tell them about the cloud, necro evolution, this whole mess. But you... I can handle it, Yasna. I'll take the stimulants and hold out until they arrive. Whatever it takes to stay awake. Maybe I can write it all down. Und ich denke mal, wenn man jetzt hier eins von beidem ausschaltet, kommt man in das gleiche Ende. Wouldn't it be better if you took my diary? It contains everything I've learned. Huh. As long as your commander doesn't mind. Please take it, Comrade Rehitra. There are no more factions on this forsaken planet. We're all just people here. Thank you. For this and for everything else. Sicher doch. Meinst du, du kommst klar? I've prepared Hopper for departure, but there's still the matter of access to the landing pad on the bow. Novik, how do you know about our landing pad? Well, you know what they say? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Astrogator likes big ships. <laughs> right. Anyway, someone has to break the force field and open the dome. The field automatically deactivates when the dome is open. It's the same switch on the control station. All right. Sounds simple enough. Look for the control station. There will be a lever that opens the bow. Okay. Okay, got it. Everything's ready, Astrogator. Copy that. Hopper is on its way. Good luck, Rahitra. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Have a safe flight, Yasna. You Commonwealth ain't all that bad. Viel Glück. Connected. Great. Hopper is just landing. 
Wow, already? It went smoothly. The landing pad is generous in proportion. <sighs> like everything here. Hey, I can see Hopper. I can't believe I'm finally coming back to you. I'm very happy to hear it, Yasna. Me too, it's just... It was such a long and difficult mission. Und da hinten ist die Wolke. Unaufhaltsam. Are you ready? I'll just close the hatch and... And what? Never mind. I'm gonna strap myself in now. Ready? Copy that. Hopper is taking off in three, two, two one. one. Star Wars Industries. Das war's dann also wieder von Invincible. Ein weiteres Ende. Wir haben Rohitran nun zurückgelassen und mit ihm unser Tagebuch. Ob die Unbesiegbaren da irgendwas anrichten können. Weiß ich nicht. Game published by 11-Bit Studios. Und wer weiß, wie lange es geht, bis die Invincibles überhaupt kommt. Und Rohitra erlebt jeden Tag wieder von vorne. Gar nicht schön. Naja. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und bis zum nächsten Mal bei einem anderen Ende. Zwei stehen uns noch bevor. So viel kann ich sagen. Vielen Dank und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.